Hello there, you're welcome to the wonderful and awesome moment, the Glory Reign Devotional. This is the moment where the glory of God overshadows your life. This is the time where the presence of God makes the difference for you. You're not tuned to this broadcast by chance. God brought you away today. And I sense the Spirit of God is about to do some huge things for you today. It has been a wonderful year. God has been doing some glorious things irrespective of what has been happening all over the world. You know why? Our God worked out all things for the good of those who love Him. Those who are called according to His purpose. You know, that's the word of God in Romans chapter number 8, verse 28. But we know that all things work together for the good of those who love Him, those who are called according to His purpose. And guess what? For every one of you listening to the sound of my voice right now, there is a divine agenda concerning your life. And God has said, my plan for you are good and not evil. Plans to bring you to your expected end. And you see, he said, plan to bring you to your expected end. He's the only one who can bring you there. You cannot find it. You cannot get there by yourself. Until God reveals it to you, there's no way you can catch his divine agenda. Divine agenda needs divine revelation. And if you're going to fulfill divine agenda, you have to be in sync with the word of God. And that's the reason why we take our time every morning to look at the scriptures, the word of God. So many people miss out in the plan and purpose of God for their lives because they never get to see from the word of God what God is saying about their lives and destiny. And that's the reason we are doing this today. And we ask that the presence of God, the glory of God, will be upon us and the Spirit of God will grant unto us divine light so we can have understanding to know how best to go about each day, each journey, each assignment to the praise and glory of God. You're welcome once more to the Glory Realm Devotional. We've been on the Beatitudes. We started Matthew chapter number 5 just a couple of days ago and then we have to skip chapter 6 because we've done that before now we're going to chapter number 7 we are not re really reading every verse but we're just picking up certain sections that I sense by the leading of the spirit that you need to walk in and this is what we're doing now Matthew chapter number 7 we're reading verse 1 and maybe verse number 2 Look at what the Word of God says. Now, it says, Do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourselves. Verse number 2 says, For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned and in accordance with the measure you use to deal out to others, it will, it will be dealt out again to you. Now, this is just simple principles in the, in the scriptures. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is that the scripture is made up of a lot of principles. Now, once you understand the principles, it will work stronger than the principles and the theories propounded by scientists. Now, you know, uh, scientists propound their theories and, you know, they start with hypotheses and then once it is generally accepted, it becomes, it, it becomes a theory. Now, such theories may still have some, you know, uh, errors or some miscalculation, but, you know, when it comes to the divine word of God, the inspired word of God, there's no, there's no room for error or miscalculation. And here is one principle that you need to apply to your life so you will have the glory of God revealed in your life. Part of the reason why the glory of God is not revealed like it should be in many lives is because a lot of people fail to live their lives by the principles in the word of God and look at what the word of God says now it says do not judge and criticize and condemn others now you know people say oh don't judge don't judge 
but it's not just a question of you know uh, don't judge but you need to understand what this is really talking about this do not judge or criticize others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourselves so if you don't want to be judged and criticized then don't judge and criticize now the word judge here is much more than just um, a crit just uh, making a comment about somebody is for example looking at somebody and say this man will never amount to anything all right or looking at somebody and you know uh, somebody for example who used to have um, a bad reputation and has made some amendment and then you just look at the person and said mm, over my dead body this one can never be trusted sometimes we make such sweeping statements and such very difficult and serious conclusion on people when God Almighty has not concluded on them. In other words, be careful when you speak about people. Be careful when you speak as though you have the final say. Only God has the final say. Be careful when you look at somebody created by God Almighty and speak as though that is the final, you know, situation of the person. God Almighty now says, if you don't want to be judged, criticized, condemned, then don't do that to others. In other words, do unto others what you want to be done to you. If you don't want people to treat you with uh, some kind of uh, lack of understanding, then don't do that to somebody else. Uh, if you don't want people to, to deal with you uh, kind of in a very very harsh you know unreasonable manner then don't do that to others what you want to be done to you start doing it to others that's the simple principle the scripture is saying if you cannot swallow it then don't give it to somebody else God is simply saying try to be nice try to be merciful as much as you can try to be somebody who is kind you know that you don't really seem to you don't really gain so much from being somebody who is hostile somebody who is lacking mercy and so today the spirit of god is saying now if you go to psalms we're going to continue tomorrow on that if you go to the book of psalms the scripture actually say now it puts it this way in the book of psalms now psalm 18 it says you know to the merciful god will show himself mercy all right so if you want god to be merciful to you then you need to be merciful to your fellow man it is very possible that you have found yourself not having a lot of favor with people but i want you to think have you been favorably disposed to others have you treated people with a kind merciful disposition or it has been the flip side it is my prayer today that what you expect from God, which is the most important, that you will give to others. If you expect the mercy of God, then show mercy. If you expect forgiveness from God, then walk in forgiveness with your fellow man. There's a greater glory locked up concerning your life that will be revealed when you walk in mercy. And mm. The greatest of them all is to ask that the Lord will have mercy on you. If you are not sure that you're giving your life to Christ, this is the time. Can you say, Lord Jesus, please have mercy on me. In any way, I have not been merciful to others. In any way, I have been wicked. I've been a sadist. In any way, I have not been considerate with others. Have mercy on me. Deliver me. And please, teach me how to be merciful. Teach me how to live with my fellow man with a heart of mercy and love. And I believe he heard your prayers. And your life will never be the same again. Thank you for being part of today's devotion. I trust that the glory of God will make the difference in your life. It is well with your body, well with your soul, and well with your spirit. Till I come your way again, this is Ego Lewis Yegbebu. God bless you.